Greetings friends, in today's video we're going to be um, answering some questions that you guys posted in the comments section. Thank you for doing that and so let's take a look at what we've got here. Let's see here. First question is, I have lots of jack pine on my land in northern Michigan. Is it okay to use any of it in my barn? So basically what you want to do is compare the data with the species that you want to use with say either eastern white pine or Douglas fir. So you can kind of see a comparison um, you know eggs to eggs, apples to apples comparison of what what we're looking at. So dried weight eastern white pine weighs 25 pounds per um, cubic feet and jack pine weighs 31 pounds per cubic foot so you got to take that into consideration when you're using it so it's it's a heavy heavier material by quite a bit so um go back to eastern white pine your janka hardness is 380 pounds a foot square foot now this is just the surface hardness of the wood so um it's it's basically if you shot a bullet at uh, the piece of wood, how deep the bullet would go in, or a steel ball is what they use as a steel ball, how deep the ball would go into the piece of wood. Really don't, doesn't have a lot of revel, relevance as far as structure goes, uh, but it does as far as durability goes. So for eastern white pine, you're looking at 380 pounds per square foot. And for jack pine, you're looking at 570 pounds per square foot. So quite a bit denser material, a little harder to impact through. Um, modules of rupture. This is this is what they uh, determine as the bending strength of, of the material. So so basically, this is the amount that this wood, the amount of force that this wood, this particular species, will take in bending before it breaks. So this is the breaking point, rupture. So for eastern white pine you're looking for you're looking at 8600 pounds and for jack pine you're looking at 9900 pounds. So a little bit stronger, jack pine's a little bit stronger as far as uh, bef before its breaking point. Um, keep in mind it's also a little bit heavier so um, that plays into the factor as well so it's probably gonna come out about the same um, as far as the strength goes per weight because even though jack pine is stronger it has to hold more it has to resist more because it weighs more but anyway that's the same way with species like oaks or uh, um, you know different hardwoods that are heavier quite a bit heavier than eastern white pine all right, so elastic modules is the next number we're going to look at. And basically this measures how stiff the wood is, how, how much it resists um, pressure. So it's a, it's a measure of how much stress the wood can take. So in this case, eastern white pine is uh, 1,240,000. And then in jack pine, we're looking at... 1,350,000. So uh, in elastic modules, jack pine does a little bit better than eastern white pine. So now we're looking at tr crushing strength, sometimes known as compression strength, parallel to the grain. Uh, it's it's a measurement of the wood's maximum crushing strength. So if the, if the wood were, I don't know, say run over by a tank, <laughs> Uh, how much it t how much pressure it takes to reduce that size of the wood and how much that wood reduces in size how much it takes to push down shrink shrink that uh, piece of wood so on eastern white pine you're looking at 4,800 pounds and jack pine you're looking at 5,660 pounds so a little bit better than eastern white pine there again um, now, the last number, which I consider to be one of the biggest 
pluses of eastern white pine, um, along with all its strength characteristics, is its shrinkage. Uh, so on eastern white pine, your shrinkage radially is 2.1%, tangentially is 6.1%, volumetric is 8.2%. So basically shrinkage is how much the wood will shrink as it goes from just sawn on the sawmill to you know the final dimension. All wood moves um, a little bit. You know it'll shrink a little bit. Some woods will shrink more than others. Um, some woods will take longer to dry than others. Uh, so there's a couple different factors you need to take into consideration when you're using uh, picking a certain material for your project. Um, so let's compare the numbers with white pine on shrinkage to jack pine. Jack pine, you're looking at 3.7 radial shrinkage, where white pine, you're looking at 2.1% radial shrinkage. That's a pretty significant difference. Um, it's almost twice as much, uh, which means core, uh, jack pine is going to shrink quite a bit while it's drying. Uh, just based on that, I would recommend not using it green. I would use it, I would uh, saw it and then sticker it um, and then dry, let it dry for several months before you build with it. Um, that is a, a lot of radial shrinkage. So you could get splitting, you could get cupping and warping uh, because of that. So, but that doesn't mean that it's not good to use. It just means, because it's a strong wood, it just means that you need to take extra care when you're handling it to make sure that it's stable. So uh, let's look at the tangential um, shrinkage on eastern white pine, that's 6.1%. On jack pine, that is 6.6%. So not a lot of difference there. So your tangential uh, is your um, shrinking along the length of the beam, which generally this doesn't amount to a lot. But if you're you're setting the, the beam aside for several months and letting it shrink, um, that, that amount of uh, shrinkage is going to happen while it's setting aside instead of in your building. So, so um, usually what that results in is a very small, with white pine, a very small gap between where the, the post and the beam come together. Very small, but, and of course, the longer it takes you to build the barn, um, the, the tighter that gap will be, so. Okay, so I'm gonna link uh, both of those references in the description and uh, check those out. The Wood Database is a great source for looking at different species. So if you have, you know, a species that you want to build your barn up, barn with, bring up eastern white pine, and then bring up the species that you're um, thinking about using, compare the two, pay a special special attention to shrinkage, um, because that talks a lot about the stability of the wood you're trying to use. And that'll tell you whether you want to um, hold off on building, you know, cut your material and then hold it off for a while, or if you want to go ahead and just build with it. Um, there are very few species that are as stable as eastern white pine, so uh, Douglas fir would be one that's fairly stable, but uh, but do your research, use the wood database, it's a great resource, and then on to the next question. There's another species question. Is white spruce any good for timber framing? Let's let's take a quick look at white spruce since we got the question. Um, okay, real quick, we're going to go down the list. So Jenka hardness. We're going to look at Jenka hardness first. And for white spruce, you're looking at 480 pounds. Eastern white pine, looking at 380 pounds. So um, white spruce is going to be a little bit harder than eastern white pine. Modules of rupture for white spruce is 8,640 pounds and then for eastern white pine 8,600. So very similar. 
uh, white spruce for elastic modulus is 1,315,000. Uh, and then eastern white pine is 1,240,000. 1, so a little bit better there. Uh, crushing strength of white spruce, 4,730 pounds. And then for eastern white pine, 4,800 pounds. So white pine does a little bit better there. But it's not enough that I would be concerned. Okay, so for shrinkage, white spruce, radially, we're looking at 4.7%. Eastern white pine, 2.1%. So again, quite a significant difference. Tangential is 6.1% on eastern white pine, and white spruce, it is 8.2%. 8.2% uh, for eastern white pine, and... 13.7% for white spruce. So it's going to lose a lot of, uh, it's going to shrink a lot. So if, in that case, you might want to go um, a little bit heavy on your measurements when you're sawing the timber out. Um, so if you want to, you know, if you want to end up with a six by 10, say, you might want to cut it at six and a quarter by 10 and a quarter or even more, six by six and a half by ten and a half. When, you, when it shrinks down, it'll be close to that six inch by ten inch dimension. So anyway, that uh, I think that takes care of a comparison between white spruce and white pine. And on to the next question: How do you recommend insulating a timber frame? And I'm going to put up some video or pictures, I'm not sure which I'm going to do yet, um, of the inside of our addition that we're working on. And I've sh I'll show you what type of insulation we used on our own project. Um, I recommend it highly. Uh, and this is closed cell spray foam. Um, I know it's expensive, uh, but it's worth it. It's worth every penny. So. Um, it's going to save you money in the long run on your heating and cooling bills. And I really highly, and, it, and it's dense enough that you don't have to have an extremely thick um, uh, cavity to hold, house your insulation, which is going to save you money in the construction of your building. So, and it really lends itself well to our barns um, because you can insulate between the two by six girts and the three by six purlins. The second question or the next question says sawed my main post today stickered strapped and painted ends white red and white oak some walnut for outer posts not yet cut should these posts by be treated in any way to make them less tasty to termites carpenter ants or post beetles um, the big thing with insects is to get your wood clear of any sapwood or um, bark. That's the biggest attractor to um, different uh, bug species that want to start eating your your material. Another thing is to keep that wood dry. Um, a lot of times you'll have termite problems in very humid areas around the country. Um, and then you know uh, the the wood stays wet. Then, if the wood has a higher moisture content, it's more attractive to bugs um, because they can grow better in that type of environment. Um, so basically, you want to take away that food source from the bugs. That's the biggest thing. Um, getting your lumber sawed into square pieces and uh, stacked up um, and dried. Um, get it to get it to a dry point. It doesn't have to be kiln dried. It can just be air dried as long as it's dry. Um, if you have an infestation already, um, that, then you're going to have to deal with um, killing off that in infestation, whether it's carpenter ants or, or um, uh, termites, powder post beetles, etc. Um, I would recommend talking to local sawyers. Um, you know, if you're going to order your wood from a local sawyer, ask them what they do to prevent bugs and follow their advice. Um, 
as a last resort, you could use chemical treatments uh, to kill off infestations, but bugs uh, vary across the country depending on where you live. So what I tell you from Michigan might not be the same as Louisiana or Florida or something like that. So, so do your own research and make sure that you get, you know, take care of the bug problem because, you know, it could really, um, really cause some issues down the road if you, if you don't. So anyway, um, I think that was our last question. Yep. Uh, any resources I'll find, I find, or I mentioned on the video, I'll link in the, I'll try to link in the description. And, uh, uh, if you have any questions, comment below, make sure you comment, click the thumbs up, really appreciate it. Helps us a lot. And, uh, keep the questions coming. We'll, we'll make more videos and, and, and hopefully everyone will benefit from the answers. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day. And we'll catch you on the next video.